right hand. And it is Isaiah 41, 10. Good job. All right, now, children, thank you for letting it all started with you. And now I want you to say to the girls, boys, I want you to help me with it. Okay, remember how we did it? We're going to do it how we did it all week. Are you ready to do it? Let's do it. On the count of three, it is one, two, three. Don't be afraid.
How are y'all doing this morning, anyway? Okay, so I gotta tell y'all something. We're a very energetic group. I need more energy than that. How are y'all doing this morning, anyway? Awesome. All right, so for those of you who don't know who we are, this is his group. And this team is full of high school students. We have a couple of graduates that are gonna be leaving us. And this team is always down in Kids Town throughout the year giving workshops to the first through fourth graders. And so this past week we've been in here for Summer Kids Club, and it's been a true blessing to be able to be with the kids in here. And they always came down and ran to the brunch. It's been a really awesome week. So we get to provide the worship for y'all this morning. And we have three songs. So I'm gonna ask y'all to stand up and we're gonna worship together. If you sing, when you worship, sing. If you clap, clap. If you wanna dance with us, that's great. We love it. So our first song is gonna be Wave Walker. And the significance of this song, I think, was just really cool because getting ready for this week, it's always a super crazy week, especially for those that work. And so last week, Pastor Randy talked about Peter walking on water in Matthew 14. And that really got me into the groove of what this week was and how that when we just give God inches, how he will take us miles. And so just pray for worship with us this morning, and we're going to have a great day. Are y'all ready?
And the cool thing about that is actually we have a team working for right now that is actually going to be heading to Kenya. So if they are in the room, there you go. Give a round of applause for everybody. Okay, cool. Yes, and there's 21 people on the team that are heading out. That's amazing. That's awesome. Cool. All right, so, you have a bow with us, we're gonna pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you just for how you move and how you work in our lives. And Lord, for this team and the gifts that you bless them with. And Lord, we just pray that as they're heading there, Lord, you will keep them safe in their travels, but most importantly, Lord, as they're focused on the mission and the task at hand, as they're there, Lord, that it will just go swiftly and smoothly the way that you want it to be. And Lord, we also pray for safe travel as they're heading back. Lord, we also look to the families of those that are going to be here uh, waiting for them in their safe return. So, Lord, we just thank you. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, guys. And we're going to move forward to the first conclusion today. I'm Wally Carr. NASA's first return trip to the moon in nearly 50 years inspired an entire nation just a few days ago. Commander Savannah Bridges and astronaut Brady Johnson both set course on a round trip of nearly a half million miles to convince the very first stages of preparation for a future lunar colony. During their only spacewalk, the astronauts were forced to abandon their mission when an approaching meteor detected by NASA satellites was in direct alignment with the Gateway One landing site. That, as it turned out, was only the beginning of the problems for the crew. A fragment of rock we have learned struck the spacecraft and potentially damaged the heat shield, the very essence of protection from the extreme heat during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and now placing both of the astronauts in grave danger. Officials at the Johnson Space Center have since regained communication with the crew, but are now faced with the harsh reality of a damaged heat shield as being non-repairable and unreliable. Many of the members of Mission Control have now turned to prayer for the safe delivery of the astronaut crew. Our sources tell us highly decorated flight director Tim Anderson in an elevated state of frustration uncharacteristically left the control room in a rush, but to the relief of team members in Mission Control, has since returned to resume his duties. It has been reported that his demeanor is now calm and calm. All we can do now is watch and wait for word from NASA. Will the heat shield hold? Will the crew make it back home? We'll find out in just a few short moments.
What changed your mind? A wise friend spoke in valuable truth to me. Guys, what I did, abandoning this group, was completely unacceptable. I walked out on all of you when none of you would have done the same for me. I didn't portray the qualities of a good leader in that moment. I didn't represent Christ. And we have only one shot at getting the crew back to the atmosphere. We've done all that we can as controllers. But we have to be willing to accept that God might call the crew home to him before we have the chance. But I've come to learn in life, if you're given just 1%, that's something worth fighting for and believing in. No matter what happens here today, I will stand by each and every one of you. No matter what. The crew is approaching radio blackout. Okay, flight controllers. Bottom go, no go for reef. Andy. Go. Nick. Go. Julie. Go. Gateway one, begin reentry. out at 25,000 miles per hour, producing temperatures of up to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the moment, ladies and gentlemen. Will the heat shield hold? Will the command module survive the intense heat of reentry? Well, if it doesn't, ladies and gentlemen, there will only be silence. Okay, flight, uh, three minutes. Standing by for reactors. Roger that.
They didn't make it.
and that was phenomenal. Now here the kids slowly but surely memorized Isaiah 41.10, and Miss Terry would always say, kids, this verse has two, come on kids, this verse has two, and five, which was phenomenal. And Jessica, who came up and gave the Bible teaching every night, would unpack that. How the verse and how God lived it out in the lives of all these little Bible stories. How God was always faithful to his promises. And the kids would walk away knowing that God said these words years ago, but his promises continue today. And so this morning, I only have a brief few minutes, and some of you out there go, oh, good. But I only have a brief few minutes to share with you. And I want to take Isaiah 41.10. And for the adults, because you weren't in, most of you weren't in there, and kind of unpack that real, real quick for you. And I want to take the verses 2. Oh, come on. 2 and 5. And just talk about them real quickly with you. Can I do that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to do, we're going to start off with the two commands that God gives us. Looking at the verse, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. We all go through life, no matter if you're five, and I ask for a hour, and I ask second hour, is there anyone out there that's 105? It's becoming more and more common nowadays, people live that long. Fear. In fact, I would probably say that most of us have experienced fear. Is that true? Be brave. Right, come on. Most of us experience fear somewhere in our life, right? Again, whether you're five or 105. You know, as, as speaking to the adults in the room, our fears have kind of changed as we've gotten older. You know, maybe when we were young, maybe it was a whole idea of learning how to ride a bike or a or whatever, we're a little afraid of that. Then you got older, things at school maybe, we got older, you know, maybe in junior high, high school, it was all about relationships. A little fearful on that. If you got older, and then college, and on, a little fear about what the future is all about. But we all face fear. And sometimes they come and go, but sometimes some of us deal with fear from all the way back here, and it just follows us through our life. I know for me, I experienced the fear that started in elementary school, to junior high, to high school, and to a young adult, and even now, today, as an adult, I deal with it. The fear kind of raises inside me again every so often in my life. And in fact, as I was moving through this, this fear even found its way into Sunday school, as I worked in, as I went to Sunday school as a child. And here's my fear. Not the book. I'm not afraid of the book. What my fear is are the words in this book. My biggest fear is reading out loud. I can't do it. I'm not very good at it. My biggest fear growing up in junior high and high school, in elementary, junior high school, was being called on to read out loud. I can remember the vivid memory being in classes where the teacher said, okay, we're going to move, you know, desk to desk to desk, and each one of you are going to read a paragraph. And I would literally count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm paragraph nine. And I would count the paragraphs. I would get the paragraph nine, and I would read it over and over. And I would pray, please don't big words, please don't big words. And it would get to me, and I probably read that paragraph 23 times. I didn't even hear what everybody else was reading because of the fear of reading out loud. And in the midst of fear, that got older. I began to be a little more sensitive in hearing what God is saying. As I got older, I began to hear God whisper in my ears, Robert, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Because fear can easily lead to discouragement, a sense of disheart, disheartness, and a sense of hopelessness. And let me tell you what, 
In my fear, there were times that I felt that. I said, God, why can't I read like so-and-so or like so-and-so? Why can't I pronounce big words like, why, why, why? And God would whisper in my heart, Robert, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. But he didn't stop there. He went out and gave me two promises. Robert, I am with you. In that whole book of Isaiah, it was written to a group of people that were very fearful. People that God dearly loved. And there's a chef, there's a person there who talks about his tenderness into their fear. When he said these words in Isaiah 40, verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people. God knew they were afraid. God knew their fear. God knows my fear. And he says, comfort, comfort. Take a deep breath. I'm with you. Don't panic. But he doesn't leave it there. Then he says, not only am I with you, I am your God. I'm not growing up in church. I heard that phrase a lot. I always never thought of it. Of course he's my God. Sunday school teacher tell me that. Mom and dad tell me that. He's my God. But as I got older, I realized what that truly means. He's the person, as I like to personalize it, he's my creator. He made me. Scripture tells me that he knew me before I knew me. Does that make sense? And that he knitted, put me together inside my mom. And he created me for a purpose. And he has a plan for my life. The kid that fearful and a young adult and sometimes the older adult that has a fear of reading out loud. Robert, I got a purpose for your life. I got a plan for your life. I know for some of you, maybe most of you, your biggest fear would be where I'm standing right now. But God created me and gave me a purpose and a plan. And believe it or not, for some of you to free read out loud, he gave me a love for words. I love words. And so when I hear words like, don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, I am with you, I'm your God, they speak to me. But here's how great God is. He doesn't stop there. He says, I'm going to give you three more promises that you can bank on. He says, I will give you strength, I will help you, and I will hold you. And sometimes people, when they're in the middle of our fear, We just need to know that God is holding us. And he whispers that to you today. I don't know, I know in a room this size, there are some of you that are struggling with some fear in your life. I don't know what that is. And maybe even your family doesn't know what that is. But when I say fear in your life, you know what that is. And here's what God's whispering to you right now. See if you can hear it. He's saying, don't be afraid. I am with you. Don't be discouraged. I'm your God. I made you exactly who you are. I knew you I knew this was going to happen. But here's the deal. I'm going to give you strength. And I'm going to hold you This morning, I want you to say that I'm going to leave us with this verse right here. I totally missed it on the first hour. I'm going to, because this verse speaks to me. Isaiah 46, 4 says, I will be your God through all your lifetime. Yes, even when your hair is white with age. God's talking to this guy. I have made you. And I will, and I care for you, and I will carry you along and be your savior. Fear, listen. When fear enters in, 
Take a step back. Listen. God is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For I'm with you. I am God. I will give you strength. I will help you. And here's the word I love. And I will hold you. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the week of Summer Kids Club. We thank you for your word and how powerful it is. We thank you, you're a God that knows each one of us intimately. In fact, you made us who we are. And sometimes we question that. Why did he make me like this? And we need to understand that you created us for a purpose and have a plan for our life. And when fear wants to stop us, interrupt us, distract us, may we be people that stand back and we listen for the words of promise. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. I'm with you and I'm your God. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Now before you go, I got a couple things I need to announce. And then you're somebody that's been around summer teaching for years, they've got to end a certain way this morning. So hang on. Okay? I just want to give you a few announcements. We had a great week, but it doesn't end right here. It actually moves to 5 o'clock this evening, over at the Y, right up here on 3. We're going to have baptisms. Now, here's how it works. If you're planning and you've been baptized, feel free to come at 5 o'clock over to the Y and witness baptism. If you're out there today and you're thinking, you know, I've given my life to Christ, but I've never taken that next step in my relationship with Him. This might be your moment. Go right outside the store, right when we're down here, go to the Life Center, Roland Salinas, who was up here earlier, our student ministry pastor, is going to lead a little orientation to get you to understand what it is. Maybe that's all you need to know. What is baptism? There's no expectation. You go to the class, learn, you might decide that's my next step my walk with God. If you've given your life to Christ, I need to get baptized. Okay. That's 5 o'clock. Now, 6.30, right outside of the quad area out there, we have what's called Family Fun Night, which is a fun night. You don't have to necessarily have just been to Summer Kids Club. If you're part of the Gateway family or you're friends of Gateway, we want you here tonight. We've got all kinds of fun stuff going on from 6.30 on, and I know it's going to be just a tad warm. But there's a lot of water going to be out there with water blow-ups and all kinds of stuff. If I remember right, a snow cone machine will be out there, and we can just take all the ice out of that snow cone machine today. So plan to come. Bring something to drink with you. Uh, bring a chair. Bring shade if you need the shade. Bring a portable air conditioning unit. Whatever you need. But you're not going to want to miss it. It's probably one of the most fun thing we do as a family. Is tonight at 6:30. Last thing, and I'm totally the I promise. Next Sunday is a thing called Starting Point. Now, if you've been attending Gateway, but don't really know Gateway, want to get to know Gateway a little bit more, we encourage you to come to Starting Point because a little tagline that goes along with it is Starting Point, moving from attending to belonging. We want you to belong to this wonderful family, and your first step is just getting to know who we are as family. And that's right after second service, this service, next week, in the coffee shop. And here's the deal. Free lunch. On us, free lunch. Show up. Just be there. We'll feed you. You'll say, Rock, what about my kids? We got that covered. Free lunch for your kids, too. You don't need to sign up. Just show up right out there, 1130, or after the 11 o'clock service, right out there. And it'll be a great time. I think that's all I have. Let's call Miss Terry back up here. She's going to take us home. So every night when you close out, we don't say goodbye. We're not going to say goodbye today. It's sad that Summer Kids Club 2019 is done. After we leave here today, we're just going to say so long.